But first, let's turn to South Korea, because they have seen a slowdown in the number of cases and may just be over the worst. How have they done it? I'm joined live from Seoul by South Korea's Foreign Minister, Gang Kyung-hwa. Uh, Foreign Minister, thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me, Mr. Mark. Thank you. You have adopted a particular strategy towards this. Just explain to us the basis of your strategy. Yes. The basic principle is openness, transparency, fully keeping the public informed. And I think uh, this is paying off. We have a very good health care system to begin with. We have a system that is highly wired, as you can imagine. And fully utilizing that, we have dealt with this uh, outbreak uh, from the very beginning with transparency. And that's the way we've uh, won the public trust and support for this. And as you say, we are seeing a stabilizing trend. For three days in a row, the number of newly confirmed positive cases is smaller uh, than the number of those fully cured and released. Um, you've also got the most extraordinary testing system. You're testing, I think, 20,000 people a day, yes. which is far more than any other country of your size. How have you managed to achieve this? And why is testing central to what you're doing? Well, first of all, testing is central because that leads to early detection. It minimizes further spread and it quickly treats those found uh, with the virus. That's the key behind our very low uh, fatality rate as well. I think the, our system quickly approved the testing system after the Chinese authorities released the uh, genetic sequence of the virus in mid-January, our health authorities quickly conferred with the, uh, the research institutions here and shared that uh, result with pharmaceutical companies who then produced the reagent and the equipments needed for the testing. And so I think our testing is uh, nearly a quarter of a million at this point, 268,000 um, as of today. That's remarkable. Um, the other thing that you do, of course, is that you monitor people afterwards. You're not going into the same kind of lockdown, the social yes. exclusion that a lot of European countries are, but instead you're monitoring people by phone app. Mm -hmm. Again, can you explain why you're doing that and not closing down large chunks of your country? Well, I think this is being faithful to the values of our very vibrant democracy, which is uh, open and, uh, you know, the government fully in the service of the people. And I have to say our public is very demanding, expects the highest standards from government services. And I think this is the key. We are monitoring very closely the inbound traffic. We have also put in place vetting uh, of outbound traffic so that we minimize the risk coming in from the inbound traffic, but also make sure that we do our very best to contain the spread within country, but also taking steps to uh, vet those with possible symptoms among those who are leaving the country. The number of new cases is slowing down. Do you think you're over the worst now? Well, the peak of new cases was in late uh, February when we had a hit over 900 new confirmed cases. That has now come down to 76 new uh, cases as of today. So yes, we are definitely seeing a normalizing trend in your know, reduction of new cases. But of course, we're not complacent. This is not just about us. And we are taking this approach of openness and transparency, not just domestically, but to the international community because we are a country that is highly interdependent with the rest of the world. Our economy depends on this interdependency with the outside world, so we want to keep the, the doors open with the other countries. And so as other this disease spreads to many more countries, we are watching very closely and we are committed to maintaining our open approach. It may not be applicable in other countries with less IT infrastructure and other values, but I think in the end, we have to acknowledge that this is not going to be the last time a novel pathogen uh, becomes a global health threat. So we hope that our experience and our approach and model informs uh, other countries dealing with this COVID-19, but also leading to greater international collaboration for better preparedness when this comes around the next time. As it will in your view. This is not the end of, uh, even if you get through this, it's not the end of the episode, it's the beginning of a new way of living almost. 
Yes. One thing I also would like to point out, as governments also have to guard against panic, I think governments have to be cool-headed about this and do what we do based on evidence and science. Declaration of the pandemic by the WHO risks turning the spread of the virus into a spread of fear and phobia. I can't tell you how many incidents uh, I get uh, reports of Asians, not just Koreans, but being verbally abused even physically attacked in other countries. And this, governments have to take responsibility to stop this kind of incident because that is not helpful to generating the spirit of collaboration that we Indeed. absolutely need to overcome this challenge together, globally. Korea, which is recognized by the world for its excellent initial response and systematic system establishment, Han kyung who showed Korea to the world in an interview with BBC, emphasized racial discrimination and national harmony, and showed the world a great performance as a foreign minister. And foreigners who saw this interview showed these reactions. I watched the South Korea foreign minister talk for five minutes and wish she was the British prime minister. The South Korean minister was so eloquently spoken, informed, and I felt that she actually cared about the people, not only her people, but the world. She was clear and no-nonsense. Now listen to the Hancock. Not clear, lots of nonsense. Can we borrow a South Korean foreign minister for a few months? I can't stop watching it. She is magnificent. This woman and South Korea are amazing. We need to follow their lead for this pandemic and to prepare for the next one. And stop shameful abuse of Russia. They might have the answer.